it, it, is, it is really our honor and privilege to be with all of you here today. It's really uh, quite a thrill for our family. Uh, I have admired uh, Alan for so many years, uh, Monique Reiser, Opportunity Nation, and frankly, all of you in the room. I think it's been really an extraordinary day, uh, and we are thrilled to be here with you. Uh, many members of our board of directors, friends, and family uh, are also here with us to celebrate the uh, inaugural award of the uh, Jacob Javits uh, Prize for Bipartisan Leadership. Uh, and I'd like to invite uh, my family, Josh Javits, my brother, Joy Javits, my sister, and Jeff Kyle, who's a member of our board of directors, to come up and join me, please. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna uh, tell you a little bit about uh, the foundation and the rationale for the award. A little bit about uh, our father, uh, for whom this amazing convention center is named, uh, and why he was the inspiration for this award. And then we will uh, introduce uh, Senator uh, Collins and the other awardees. Thank you. Thank you, Carla, and thank you, Opportunity Nation for the important and imperative work that you do and for partnering with the Marion B. and Jacob K. Javits Foundation at this time and especially in this place. Mrs. Javits very much wanted to be with us today, but her health did not cooperate. I'm honored to stand here in her, on her behalf. Our foundation also concerns itself with the well-being of young people and we have had great success in helping them realize their potential. Any failure of our great experiment in self-governance to benefit from our greatest resource, our youth, hurts each and every citizen. And at this time, I believe we are experiencing a crisis. The prize that we have created and will award today is meant to reward those who through bipartisanship eliminate roadblocks and insist upon progress. Joshua Javits is here to tell you more about our prize and our process. Thank you, Jeff. I'm Josh Javits, and I'm going to tell you a little about this, uh, this prize. This is the inaugural year, the first year we've given the presentation of the Javits Bipartisanship Prize and it's meant to go forward in future years. So we're very excited to be here. The prize is meant to call attention to and to celebrate public servants who cooperate across the partisan divide to advance the nation's interests over narrow political expediency. The prize is named for our father, senator from New York for 24 years, from 1956 to 1980, who was a a progressive Republican. He was a man who spoke his own mind with force and conviction, but he also listened carefully and respectfully to other points of view. He saw legislation as problem solving, and he had little tolerance for those who just wanted to stifle or thwart, thwart the opposing party. His way of getting legislation passed was to first say what he thought not demonizing his opponents, and not oversimplifying complex matters. Second, to seek understanding of what and why other people believed as they did, and to keep an open mind. And third, to find common ground to move forward constructively, incorporating others' good ideas and concerns, and doing the hard work of finding workable solutions that everyone has a stake in. I came up with the idea originally for the Javits Prize because I'm a labor management arbitrator and mediator, and I found every day that when both sides really listen and address each other's concerns, they are able to identify common interests and reach creative solutions to their conflicts. The result is far better than any stalemate or even a one-sided decree. To find common ground does not mean surrendering principles, but it does mean seeking creative compromise finding workable 
solutions. Our prize winners have shown this character and ability in abundance. But before we introduce them, uh, I'd like to, s to tell you a little about the process we used to select the prize winners. We had nominators, mainly academics and uh, representatives of think tanks and nonprofits, who all nominated someone for the award. Then our selectors included Erskine Bowles, who was chief of staff to President Clinton, Ken Duberstein, who was chief of staff to President Ronald Reagan, Senator Alan Simpson, Senator Richard Lugar, uh, Professor Beth Novick from NYU, Professor, Professor David Oshinsky from University of Texas, Monique Reiser, the executive director of Opportunity Nation, and David Robinson, you may not remember him, but he was a 10-time uh, uh, all-star in the NBA and the founder of Carver Academy in San Antonio and a business investor. And I'd also like to thank my sister Carla, who did 90% of the work in really getting this together. She's the get it, get it done sister. Every family ought to have one. And to Jeff, who got the beautiful uh, uh, statues uh, from Steuben Glass and worked with them uh, up there on the, on the prizes. Um, so thrilled to be here today with you. And now my sister Joy is going to tell you a little more about our father. Jacob Capel Javits listened. Not a cursory half ear waiting for his turn to speak predeterminations. Our father listened carefully. Questions would follow, acknowledging the speaker's concerns and promoting a deeper examination of the issue at hand. And then he would pause to reflect on his response which was always decisive, illuminating, honoring what had been expressed. These conversations occurred with senators, with world leaders, and with me. We met for dinner in New York or Washington, D.C., in a comfortable restaurant with good food at 8 p.m. when our father's workday might pause. There was always a thick stack of folders held together with two strong rubber vans next to him, his homework, which would keep him busy until midnight. I know my brother and sister shared these memorable evenings and dinners as well. People often ask us three, children of Jacob Javits, what would your father think of this? What would he say? ever optimistic, ever grateful, ever endeavoring to improve the life of every single individual in terms of opportunity. For the poor from whence this janitor's son came, for an empowering education, for the dignity of a good job with some measure of comfort in old age, for the pursuit of happiness through the arts, for mutual respect through civil rights, for peace in the world. He spoke to right injustices, and his spirit would never dampen. He walked across the aisle, finding a way to bridge disparities. He opened the door for collaboration with deep, abiding respect. Today we bring prominently among us Jacob Javits' legacy and his great spirit. So it's my privilege to officially announce the award of the Jacob K. Javits Prize for Bipartisan Leadership to Senator Cory Booker of New Jersey, our neighbor, New York, and Senator Tim Scott of South Carolina. We recognize these two leaders for their emerging partnership. Together they are finding common ground to address urgent problems like the absence of economic development in some communities across the U.S. 
and the lack of investment in the positive development of some of the people who live in those communities, something that this whole session today has been about. We've all followed with deep concern in parts of our beloved country the deep and sustained levels of poverty, joblessness, even rising rates of addiction, the high rates of incarceration as compared to other nations. While there's a lot of discussion about addressing the roots of these problems, it is devilishly difficult to do, in part because of the partisan divide among the policymakers and a lack of trust between those trying to solve the problems. The nation we make, however, is inspired by Dr. King's words, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. And the actual physical award that we've prepared uh, for the prize winners is a bridge and, it really, uh, and an arc, and it really symbolizes, I think, that thought. Uh, Senator Scott and Senator Booker are demonstrating how to overcome the divide. They have different perspectives on the issues, but they are united in their determination to address them. This harkens back to an earlier time when my father and New York's junior senator, Robert F. Kennedy, worked together to find common ground to address endemic poverty, racial discrimination, and the inequities of their day. Their innovations are sustained today. We have public-private investment in communities, for example, across the U.S., with community development corporations that have created affordable housing for millions of people. That started, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that started with New York's treasured Bedford-Stuyvesant Restoration Corporation, which is still a beacon, and the two senators helped to spread it across the United States. We applaud Senator Booker and Senator Scott for their work, the work they are doing together today. There's a photograph, I believe, are we going to put it up, of Senator Scott? Uh, so this is earlier today. As you know, Senator Scott addressed us. He wasn't able to stay through the uh, whole day today, but we were able to present the award in person, uh, and it was, it was quite a thrill, and we were able to speak with him about this concept of bipartisanship, and he gave us a real sense of the uh, developing rel personal relationship and policy relationship that uh, is evolving uh, with Senator Booker. Senator Booker uh, had something he had to attend to today, wasn't able to be with us, um, but uh, in a moment, we're going to show a brief video that he made. He describes the initiatives that the two senators are working on. And even though these aren't the most glamorous or headline grabbing, they matter in addressing the real issues that we face as Americans. So we recognize and honor the way that Senators Scott and Booker have chosen to work together to create the more perfect union that we continue to strive for. With that, we'll, we'll watch Senator Booker. Hi, good evening everyone. I'm so sorry that I can't be with you today in person, but I really want to express my gratitude for being recognized tonight by the Marion B. and Jacob K. Javits Foundation. This is a very meaningful recognition because I'm honored what this prize stands for, for bipartisan leadership. I'm proud that I'm getting this award along with a dear friend and someone who I admire, Senator Scott. It's not only about what this prize represents, but Senator Javits has always been one of my personal heroes. He's modeled what this uh, uh, award is all about. Senator Javits was about putting America first, about being patriotic, not to a party, but to this nation. He was guided as an American uh, to serve the public and knew that we owed a, owed a duty, not to a party allegiance, but uh, not to political expediency, but to the values that we all hold collectively as a people to our highest aspirations. And so following in that great tradition, I've spent my time in the US Senate forging those bipartisan relationships. And in fact, that was one of my primary focuses when I came down to Congress. I wanted to make sure that I began to build the real relationships and bonds necessary so that we could together address the pressing issues facing our nation. Now, when it comes to Tim Scott, Tim Scott he has been uh, one of the great pleasures of my experience. And with him, I have found a true friendship. In fact, I'm recording this just a week or so after us returning from Israel, where we were there together, two uh, people of African-American descent serving in the Senate, the only two, in fact, meeting in Israel with many people from diverse backgrounds, including uh, Ethiopian Jews. It's these kind of 
forged partnerships and friendships that I believe make the policy issues so much more easy to achieve. He and I have worked together on expanding apprenticeships, bolstering public-private partnerships, and even working on criminal justice reform. I'm so proud of what our friendship stands for and what we're working on and achieving together. As you know, this is a nation with many, many challenges. I have to say, uh, I have passions from everything from job creation to focusing on the broken criminal justice system and how it is disproportionately affecting poor folks in our country, uh, disabled folks in our country, drug addicted folks in our country, people struggling with mentally ill, mental illness. It's all of these things that make me understand that the urgency is not trying to pull our country to the left, that we are a nation that's not gonna progress going left to right. We have to find ways to forge pathways forward together. And so I'm happy and proud that today in the Senate we're crafting sentencing reform. Uh, we've done a lot to put a bill together actually with people from dramatically different parts of the political spectrum, but who are united in this conviction that we've gotta go forward together. I'm enthusiastically committed uh, to continuing this kind of work with my colleagues on both sides of the political aisle to focus on strengthening neighborhoods, creating opportunities, and making sure that we expand opportunity, liberty, and justice for all. So thank you for once again for bestowing this honor on me tonight, but I just want you to know it is a reflection of the values of all of you and the values of the great Senator Javits. We are on a nation, uh, standing in a nation right now, that has said consistently through its time what we are and who we stand for. From Lincoln, a great Republican leader who said a house divided cannot stand, to the words at the end of the Declaration of Independence where people of a lot of diverse backgrounds, diverse geographies, said that in order for this nation to work, they ended with that sentence that we must mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. You all are manifesting that sacred honor in celebrating these principles and ideals of bipartisanship, of celebrating the ideals deep within all of the cultures of our country, seen clearly in that great African proverb that said, if you wanna go fast, go alone, but if you wanna go far, go together. Thank you for helping to do more to ensure that we go far together as a nation. Thank you to the foundation and to everyone that's there tonight for your commitment to unity to patriotism, to loyalty to our country and all of our diverse people. May God bless you and may God continue to bless America.